South London, 1979, 78 students and several monitors fell very ill at the same moment. Their symptoms included vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and eventually a coma. The patients twitched violently and hallucinated for five days. The school staff was dumbstruck, fearing their pupils and co-workers may perish before their very eyes, but every patient recovered. They quickly found the culprit of the outbreak. It was one of the most common plants in the world. It makes a tasty snack, can remove rust, function as a rudimentary battery, and more. This would be the humble potato. Outbreaks such as this one are relatively common throughout history, with poisonings occurring in 1899, 1918, 1922, 1925, and even more. In fact, until the 1500s, the potato was associated with poison, leprosy, aphrodisiac properties, and the devil by Europeans. Quite a resume. But it is hard to blame people when it's from a toxic plant group. Plants in the Solanum genus contain the deadly chemical solanine, the most famous of which is nightshade, which was used as a beauty treatment to dilate the pupils used in occult rituals, and even to kill. When your potato has solanine in it, it turns a shade of green and becomes deadly. The potato has a storied history, dating back to when it was considered a god by the Incas over 10,000 years ago. Around Lake Titicaca, try saying that in mixed company, the Inca discovered the wild potato growing around the banks and set about making it a part of everyday life. These wild species are laced with solanine and tomatine, but wild llamas were seen eating the plant. The secret to their amazing ability to withstand the poison was that these toxins will stick to clay particles, which they would lick prior to eating. Eventually, native people began to mimic this by washing the potatoes in clay prior to cooking. It was prepared by mashing, boiling, roasting, fermenting, and more. Inca even dehydrated potatoes and stored them for 10 to 15 years to prevent famine. Eventually, the Spanish began scouring the hills for gold and were rewarded with potatoes. They were even more pleased when the potato warded off the sailors' scurvy. The potato then began to make its way across Europe. It is said that Sir Walter Raleigh grew the tuber in his vegetable garden in Cork, Ireland, thus bringing it to Europe. But this whimsical tale is not historically sound, as writings have no mention of him until 1826. It is more likely that the Spanish distributed it to Ireland. A 1750s poem discusses a fictional battle near Dublin where the potato is called the Friend of the Spaniards. It took little more than 40 years to spread the 4,000 varieties of potato throughout Europe from just 180 species of humble wild potato. It was regarded as an end to famine as tubers are more productive than rice, wheat, or corn can tolerate poor soil and are easy to maintain. But this was not without setbacks. The French criminalized potatoes. The English were so disgruntled about the potato that an election slogan in 1756 was, no potatoes, no popery. The Prussian king sent soldiers to force the farmers to grow them. During this Prussian war, a French soldier was captured who had changed the course of the potato. Parmentier was fed potatoes while in prison and amazed that he did not die. So he staged stunts upon his release, serving the forbidden food to courtiers. Eventually, Louis XVI began wearing a potato flower and France promptly began planting fallow fields with potatoes. It worked. Famine was virtually eliminated as potatoes became the food of the peasants. 
living standards tripled and the population drastically increased. 40% of Irish peasants ate no other solid food than potatoes. This became the birth of modern agriculture as guano was imported to fertilize the potatoes and arsenic became widely used as an herbicide. There were a few problems. These tubers planted in the 1900s, nearly 300 years after their introduction, were genetically the same plant. Monocultures, a crop that is made up of clones, are considered reliable until they aren't. The Irish lumper was a hardy potato that would grow in the worst soil and was given to the poor Irish. Unfortunately, the guano that was added as a fertilizer carried a mold called Phytophthora infestans, which specifically targets nightshade species. Due to the high density of the Irish lumper in Ireland, it stood no chance. Spores from this mold usually travel 20 feet but sometimes for half a mile. If this effect were repeated in the United States today, nearly 40 million people would starve. The potato crop was dealt another blow in the 1860s with the Colorado potato beetle. This beetle was moved by railroad across the United States to the point that their crushed bodies made the railways so slippery that trains couldn't pass. One potato farmer at his wit's end tossed his leftover paint, a mixture of copper and arsenic, onto his crop and was amazed to see that it survived. Arsenic was promptly mixed with flour and dusted over potato crops everywhere. This was, however, a temporary victory, as the beetle has adapted time and time again to each new pesticide, with a blight on the eastern United States as close as 2009. But the potato adapted to. Today, the family of plants containing the deadly nightshade contains three common vegetables, tomatoes, eggplants, and of course, potatoes. Potatoes are consumed at nearly 50 pounds per person in the United States and are not slowing down. Potatoes are no longer monocultures. They now come with catchy names such as the common russet Burbank, and the unusually colored purple Peruvian. They can be made into gluten-free breads, cut and fried into the accurately named Belgium French fry, or sliced into a deliciously crunchy potato chip. Regardless, you can take comfort that if there is one food that you can live on solely, it's the potato. Thank you for watching.